Oh, my name is Christopher Blay, and this is checking in with the Glass Tower series where we check in with artists during the great shutdown of 2020. And our guest today is Scott Winterroad. And Scott has generously donated uh, work for our Glass Tire annual auction. And we just want to chat with you about, first of all, how you're doing right now as we're all in this great lockdown or are hopefully in this great lockdown despite <laughs> encouragement uh, uh, to the contrary. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, I'm doing pretty good. I've been, uh, I've been very, very busy with my, my daytime job, which is um, running the Sid Richardson Museum in downtown Fort Worth. And so um, that's meant that I've had to go down, down to the museum at times and check on things, make sure the bills are paid. Um, there's been some behind the scenes. We were installing an exhibition right as the shutdown hit. Oh, and man. so it... Uh, it barely opened to the public and um, then it closed. And uh, so we've had just a few behind the scenes issues we've been trying to deal with on that. And then um, the real uh, thing that took us some time to get up to speed and we did pretty quick was virtual engagement. So we started to transform a lot of the programming we do at the museum to um, online format or uh, Facebook or Instagram and rebuilding the YouTube page we hadn't been using. So um, we've been very active and uh, we, we just rebuilt the, the museum's website. So we're still working on that. So there's a lot of projects going on and uh, we have a really small staff, but we're, we're all very engaged during the lockdown. So Yeah, I can only imagine. Uh, as you know, we've been doing the five minute tours where we've gotten to see uh, mm -hmm. other museums and artists kind of uh, navigate the, the switch to online experiences for things that we can't see in person right now. So, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot to think about in terms of um, engagement in the next year or so um, and how we'll, what that will look like. And so we're, we're really still trying to work through those kinds of things. Um, since museums are such places of uh, uh, where visitation happens and people interact with real works of art, yeah. um, it's pretty foreign to all of us to to come up with a, a more virtual way to do this. But um, but of course necessary at this time. So we're we're thinking about virtual tours coming forward and things of that nature. Yeah, um, and I know your nice little uh, lot in Hell's Half Acre is uh, just perfectly located for people to stroll downtown and come visit. And I can only imagine that it's been a little tough not being able to accommodate visitors. But um, well, downtown's pretty quiet. So <laughs> when yeah. I'm down there, there's very few people. It's, it's gotten a little busier this week. Um, I've been down twice for a couple of quick meetings, social distance meetings. Um, most of our meetings we're doing on Zoom, but every once in a while we've had to be in the space, and yeah. um, it's usually no more than four people or so. But um, uh, it's very, it's been very quiet, very different, and we don't know really what it'll look like when we reopen because we're we're so dependent on tourism downtown, and uh, I just don't know what that's going to look like when when things really start back up. I I don't know. Yeah. And that's the million dollar question or the billion yeah. dollar question right now. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> nobody knows. Right, um, yeah. yeah, so you're in good health. You're, um, your family's okay. Everybody's doing all right? Yes, um, I, we've all been good. Parents are good. We're just hanging out here and uh, you know, go to the grocery store, picking up food and staying around here. Um, doing a lot of gardening on the weekends or a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I painted some uh, at the beginning ish. Yeah. And uh, lately, it's just been so busy with work; it's been hard to to find time to work um, on my art at the same time as working on everything else. So it's uh, it's been yeah. a, a bit of a struggle, but yeah, healthy, thankfully. You, you're good. Yeah, <laughs> I'm good. Uh, speaking of gardening, I planted my first uh, little. Uh, 
stub of romaine lettuce in a jar in the window and <laughs> it's gone from uh, a cutting to uh, a pretty decent thing right now so i'm i'm pretty excited uh what's in your, what's uh what are you planting what's in your garden right now um I put in a bunch of things in the last few years that come back. So um, uh, um, I've got a lot of like Turk's cap that's just running wild. Um, some agaves that are quite large that I had to dig up and move around. And um, I usually go out and get a bunch of coleus that's really brightly colored and put that up and down the path. I have a really tiny backyard in the back. So um, it's, it, it doesn't take a lot, thankfully. And there's a giant ivy that's overtaking the middle of the backyard. So it's oh, uh, really low maintenance. It just all dies whenever it gets hot here, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like the the ten minute experience of spring that we usually get. Yes. In Texas. Um. So tell us about. Uh, you say you've been painting. Um, are those your works in the background behind you? Uh, no, actually, these are all friends. Um, this is Sandy Rodriguez, Jamie Ersick. Okay. So okay. Other, other Oh, yeah, give yeah. us a little sneak peek there. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is Lisa Rollinson up here. This is uh, one of my favorite prints. It's uh, called Portrait of a Soldier. It's Clinger from MASH. Um, <laughs> nice. um, and then uh, there's a little Terry Stushinoff uh, landscape at the top. And another couple of Sandy Rodriguez. She's a good friend of mine from Los Angeles. Um, okay. She's doing some really great art right now. She's, uh, she had a show up right i think it closed right at the beginning of all this so i think she she did really well so. yeah and uh i've been checking out some of the the posts that the posts that you've made recently of other artists uh watercolors and stuff where did that like how tell me about that a little bit um i've done that off and on for a long time i I find social media to be a challenging place and people like to put their opinions out there. And so I, I just, I came to a conclusion a few years ago that it was just best to keep everything I do on social media to art. And so I've posted about artists that I like or just artists that I'm inspired by or exhibitions that I see. But um, I woke up one morning uh, to the sound of rain right at the beginning of all this, and it made me think of works of art that were um, that featured rain, and one of my favorite works of art by Arthur Dove, and so that started it, and I just kind of kept going because people seem to like them, and yeah. um, a lot of people say they they appreciate the post, so I I did one on Thomas Aikens yesterday on his Western pictures. Um, but I just, you know, it's just artists that I've really loved, and uh, I have all these books all over the house, and I'm I'm a big American art fan, but I worked with all sorts of art, so it's just it's just fun, and um, you know, it's a diverts your mind, gets my mind off what I don't want to work on right now, and <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> things like that. <laughs> well, it's a really beautiful island in the the sea of everything else that's happening right now and that's, yeah, that's it's, my goal <laughs> it's definitely appreciated on my scrolling of uh facebook so yeah well, definitely thank you. keep it up um yeah and it it really it feels like your work as well um most of the things that i've seen you post are just sort of like quiet contemplative meditative um and yeah, these landscapes and watercolors that you're doing, um, I'm really glad that uh, you're generous enough to share one of those pieces with us. Um, it's the the Big Ben postcard. Yeah. I saw yeah. it with uh, New Mexico and somewhere else, I don't remember. Yeah, I've done from different places. Like if I, if I create a body of work of landscapes from a certain locale, Sometimes I'll create a postcard that kind of goes with it. And if I'm exhibiting them, that's that kind of a way of tying them together. Um, a lot of my work, um, my earliest work goes back to uh, interest in travel related imagery. And I've collected postcards for years. I have a huge postcard collection um, that it's in a rack in the back of the house right now. Um, it's been sequestered there by someone else. 
<laughs> and uh, um, <laughs> um, but there's boxes full of postcards all over this house, and uh, so it's just always an interest of mine. And so um, I think I took up doing those large letter postcards around 2009, whenever I was painting atomic bombs, mm. and I did one of New Mexico. So um, it was kind of a little playful thing, but. Um, this one is kind of a reprise. Um, I had done a Big Ben postcard quite a while back. There, there actually isn't a Big Ben large letter postcard in existence, so I had to make it up and uh, not even work from something that's already there. That's so industry. unusual that, I mean, I, I guess know. people just take it for granted that this giant yeah. state park is just there. And You'd think there was something like that, but... Um, but I did this one as a night scene because um, I just always enjoyed doing those. Um, I guess it's kind of meditative. I hadn't really thought of it before, but painting all those, painting all those little stars, which means that I paint little circles of blue and, and bleed out around them. So it takes a long time. And I, I guess yeah, I hadn't really <laughs> thought about it because it is kind of meditative. <laughs> you can get a good sense of my patience with meditation by the painting of my stars in this painting. <laughs> I just pretty much like <laughs> splatter painted <laughs> yeah, my, so stars. All my stars. Are, all my stars are paper. So uh, I just paint around and it just, you have to bleed it and keep it moving. And it, it does take some time and uh, a lot of patience. I have yeah. one that I have a couple that are never that have never been finished because you yeah. just get like oh whatever you know yeah but, yeah that's kind of where that came out of and watercolors are so deceptively um, simple looking um, but from anyone that has really done it um, yeah it it's not <laughs> it's not at all but the effects are. Um, really worth the weight and worth the, the patience with the material. I, I try to tell people that it's all about working backwards and it's kind of like printmaking. You have to think really backwards when you're working watercolor because it's about what you don't want to paint. And so right. you, it's, it's a different kind of process. Um, but, and, and I, of course, I firmly believe that the white paper is like the it's where you leave the white paper that that makes them really special there there's something about that crackle so yeah man well i'm really glad that uh you're doing okay man and um we look forward to when we can all safely emphasis on the safely <laughs> get back <laughs> to being in public in a meaningful way but um, yeah, I was, yeah, I was so looking forward to the auction and I, I wish that that could happen, but I understand why we can't, can't wait to see everyone again, but I wish you guys the best of luck with the auction. That'll be fantastic. Yeah. Thank you very much. And thanks for uh, letting us check in with you and uh, take care and we'll talk soon. Of course. Great to talk to you. You take care. All right, man. Bye.